What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner. Today I have my second rifle to show you in my rifle build series. My first video was my Dano Defense, and if you haven't watched that, I'll post a link down below. Uh, check it out, I feel like it was a pretty good video. This is gonna be the second video, and this is gonna be on my Q Honey Badger. This is a suppressed standard blackout SBR, and I'm gonna give you a spoiler. I think it's pretty sick, and before I get like too far into that, I wanted to show you guys something. So. Um, if you didn't know, uh, my channel, Mud Gunner, I do mud runs, I shoot guns, um, I own rattlesnakes, and yeah, I just felt like I wanted to have like a pretty cool logo, and I'm really happy with how it came out, and you guys can now purchase my merch. Um, right now, I don't have like a really professional way to do it, it's just through like Instagram or the store I work at, but if you want to support me, um, hit me up on Instagram. So right now I have these hats. This is Tropic Multicam. I have like eight more colors coming out and I'm pretty excited for those. Mostly different camos, but yeah. So here's a Tropic Multicam. Uh, I also have shirts and these I've had since the beginning of the year, but I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I got a variety of different colors and sizes. So just let me know if that's something you would like to do to support the channel. If not, you can just keep watching the videos. All right, so let's get back to this. This is the Q Honey Badger, and this is the SD version. They have a couple different versions. They have a pistol, which over the counter. They have a short barrel rifle, which requires the $200 tax stamp and then waiting for that process. And then they have the SD, which is the suppressed rifle. Um, they don't sell this suppressor by itself. This is the Honey Badger suppressor. That is the model on the can. Um, the only way to get that can is if you buy the SD version. And I actually like that. It kind of makes you feel special for spending a lot of money on a gun. Um, but I, I kind of like that they don't sell the can by itself. That You also get the 12-inch rail. Uh, if you buy just the pistol or the SBR, I think it's a 6-inch rail. And then all their cans, like the, the Direct Thread series, like the Half Nelson, the Full Nelson, and then the Quick Detach series, the Thunder Chicken and the Trash Panda, they're all too big to fit in the rail, just in case you're wondering. Um, so if you like this setup, I would recommend buying the SD. I think it's worth the money. Um, this is a two stamp item. It doesn't, uh, it's not integrally suppressed. Integrally suppressed guns are when the suppressor is permanently attached to the barrel. A lot of times a company will do that so you can do a one stamp item because your barrel may be 10 inches with a six inch suppressor permanently attached, making it 16 inches overall. So you don't have to do the tack stamp on the short barrel rifle, just the suppressor in that case, which Kind of weird, but yeah, this one's a two stamp item. Um, it's an eight and a half inch suppressor, seven inch barrel, and the suppressor comes off, which I actually prefer it that way. Um, it makes it just easy to take off and clean the gun. This rail is also quick detached, which is nice. Um, I'm not gonna take it off in this video because I have all my stuff on here, but figured I'd tell you guys that. So I bought this gun the second it came out in 2018, and I didn't get it till 2019 because I had to wait 10 and a half months for the tax stamps, but I bought it the second it was released. It, it was one of those, t it was at a time where I'm like, I really want a 300 blackout, but I don't know what I want. And uh, you're gonna think it's crazy, but this gun back then, like 2018, not even that long ago, uh, it was only like 25, 2600 bucks for these SBR suppressed. Obviously not the accessories, but SBR suppressed, it was like 2500 bucks. And that's because they just came out. Um, the, mar the profit margin on them was, I, I would assume pretty small, because um, when you first come out with the product, you don't know how well it's gonna do, and their company took off, so. Unfortunately, you're never going to see one for that price again, but that's just one of the perks of, you know, hopping on something at the beginning if it's something you think you're going to like, and I am not disappointed with it at all. Um, I have a few videos up on this that, like, I've posted throughout the years because this is probably one of my favorite guns. That's why it's second in this video series. Um, I'm, I'll am i be honest. I love this gun. I'm not sponsored by Q or anything like that. Uh, it'd, be lo it'd be awesome if they did, but... Um, I bought this gun out of just wanting a really cool 300 blackout, and I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, it does have its pros and cons, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit. Um, the first thing I want to get into is like how to tell if it's like an early Honey Badger or not, because they've changed some things on them. So on the early Honey Badgers, they shipped with this AR Gold trigger, and I really like this trigger. Now they ship with Geisley triggers, and maybe at some point they'll ship with their Q trigger, which honestly looks a lot like this, but this trigger is insane. So I think it's American Trigger Corp and the model is like AR Gold. I haven't looked too much into it. This is the only gun I have with this trigger. Um, but it is an insanely light trigger. So you have like, you have like a little bit of play and then it's probably like a two and a half or three ton trigger. It's insane. I feel like we're grand thumbing this. Um, but that reset is nothing. And it's, I'd say the one complaint is it's not audible. It's not a very positive click like the Geisley trigger. 
like I can feel when it uh, resets, but it's just so light. If you're not paying attention to it, you won't notice. Um, so that's how you can tell an early uh, honey badger. The other thing is the early honey badger shipped with large radiant SD charging handles, or not SD, they shipped with large radiant charging handles. Um, now they shipped with the short ones. I prefer the large ones, so I don't know why they changed that. Um, maybe to shave off more weight, because I think that's one of their big things is keeping this gun lightweight, which it is. Um, but I really like the larger charging handle. One thing that I think is a plus on the new ones, so the old ones, see how much plays in the stock? I'm not a fan of that. When you're shooting it, you're never going to notice it, but there is a good amount of play in that. Um, their notches and the stock on the old ones is very wide and very like uh, shallow. Um, the new notch, the new notches cut out in the stocks, they're very uh, short, but they're very deep in the cut. So you have a much more positive like lock where the ones I've played with, they don't have this play in it. But. Um, I don't mind it. Um, also some color variations like rails I've seen in different colors, the, the receivers I've seen slightly different colors, but I've mainly seen some really dark rails. Mine is pretty light and I like it. I like the whole color theme of this gun. A lot of, uh, a lot of people complain about the color, but I think it looks sick. I try to like mix match it a lot. I even got this uh, funny uh, spray painted mag that someone sold to our store and I think it looks sick. Um, they ship with OK Industries mags, that's what this is. Um, I didn't paint it this way, someone else did, but I use that mag, I use Lancer mags, I use the 5.56 Lancer mags and the 300s, I don't have any issues with either one, um, but yeah, I'm like all over the place. Those are the main things on how to tell the early Honey Badgers is the trigger, uh, the stock, like notches, and then the charging handle. Um, other than that, they're all relatively the same, I like them all. Um, yeah, so I'll kind of talk about what I've done with this because it's changed over the years. Um, at one point, I had a vertical grip on there. I liked it. You only have like one or two spots under, I, you only have one spot really under this uh, uh, cover here. It wasn't very ideal. Like I've been trying to figure out the best way to like use all this real estate space because you have this M lock, but a lot of it's not usable because of the can. So I had a Magpul vertical grip, but you only had one spot that you can put it on. Um, and like the Noveski Ghetto Blaster version of this, you have a full pick rail version, um, which I like, cause then you could put it wherever. Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to like figure out the best way, cause I like slinging guns. I like adding lights to guns. Ideally, I like having backup iron sights, but you'll see this one does not have it. And that's because I have the laser. Uh, for a while I had backup iron sights with the light and my optic, but I added the laser at the beginning of this year. Um, this is a Steiner D-Ball I2 or I squared and it kind of made it so I can't do the uh, front sight anymore. So if you notice, I have my Surefire mount right here. This is for the Dual Fuel Scout Light Pro. Uh, it's like a 1500 lumen light. And then I have the Steiner D-Ball here, and then they're both running on pressure pads. Uh, this handguard cover was given to me by a friend that used to make them at a company. I have no idea if you can find stuff like this. I'm sure someone makes it, but I don't know who makes this. Um, but yeah, so the way I have it is I have two pressure pads. The first one is for my light, and then the second one, if I turn this on, is for my uh, laser. And what I can do is I can wrap my thumb around, so I press here for the light and press there for the laser. Um, and I like that, like with me shooting it, it feels pretty good. And the laser uh, doesn't stay on. Uh, I, you'll, you'll kill the batteries if you leave this on, so. I just leave it in the off setting. If I need it, then I just quickly push it down and then I can use my pressure pad. It also has uh, caps right here to cover it. And it also is set up for uh, night vision, which I don't currently own night vision. I really, really, really want it. And I'll, uh, I'll post a video. I got to shoot this under night vision. You won't see it in night vision. You'll see it in the dark, but I got to shoot my buddy's night vision with this and seeing the laser under uh, PVS 14 white phosphor was just super cool. So. Good. That is the goal for this at some point is to be able to run it under nods, but for now it's just the the green laser is pretty cool. This bottom setting is the visible laser. If I put the middle, it's off, and then I push up, it's night vision, which would be under this laser. Um, 
but yeah, no, I, I really like this laser. It's the only uh, laser I have. I, I don't have any experience, like personal experience with any other one. But I really like this one. It's a quick detach laser and yeah, it's been fine. I bought it earlier this year. Um, the pressure pads, they're Velcroed to uh, this uh, cover. And then I put a little piece of Velcro tape over the cables and feel like it's decent cable management because there's nowhere for me to tie them. I mean, I could zip tie it, but they stay very close to the rail. They don't bother me at all. And it's, uh, I think it looks pretty sick. Um, what else? The sling is quick to attach. I used to run a Haley strategic sling on here, um, but I kind of switched it up to this. I just kind of like the, the vibe that this thing gives off a little bit more. Uh, the sling is a Wells Made Co. sling. It's kind of like their Aloha sling, which is pretty cool. It's super lightweight, which kind of fits the gun, and fully extended. It's it's perfect. You have this pull tab here, so you pull forward to loosen it um, because it's got teeth on there that kind of hold it in place. So pull forward, then you pull back, and that's how you loosen it. So. Um, the RMR is sweet. So this is a Triticon RMR Type 2. It's the three and a quarter adjustable MOA. It's on a American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach Mount, which I like. And this whole setup is extremely light. Um, I'll grab my scale and I'll we'll weigh it. I, but like this gun weighs so little compared to most other guns on the market. And it's fully set up. I have a light, or I have an optic, a light, I have a laser, and I have a sling. And it's suppressed. And this is lighter than so many ARs out of the box with nothing on them. So I'm super impressed with it. What else? As far as sound goes, I'm so spoiled by the sound of this gun. It is so incredibly quiet. I've shot other people's 300 blackouts and I will say nothing compares to this. Now steel. Now dirt. Now steel. I did buy a SIG Rattler with the SRD suppressor. I did get to shoot them at the range together. I'll post that video right here. It's like a minute long. All right, what's up guys? Ryan here from Bug Gunner, and we're gonna test some uh, 300 Blackout subsonic ammo. This is gonna be 220 grain ammo being stealth ammo. And we have two Rattlers. Both of these have a five and a half inch, one and five twist barrel. This one has a SIG SRD 762 quick detach can. And then this one has a Dead Air Sandman S. And then in the middle, I have my Honey Badger. This is a seven inch, uh, one inch five twist barrel with the Honey Badger suppressor. So we're gonna go Rattler with the SRD, Rattler with the Dead Air Sandman S, and then the Honey Badger. So Nate, you wanna shoot some rounds? Woo! definitely quieter than that one but it's a bigger suppressor all right what are your thoughts on this one because i can't tell when i'm the one shooting it it's definitely quieter okay but we're indoors it's echoing off the walls i have no ears and that was not unbearable at all so just wanted to show you guys a comparison and that was ammo ink 220 grain cell ammo. yeah the the sig rattler is an amazing 300 blackout it's super sweet i've only got to shoot mine once because i don't own it yet i gotta paper it still and that gun was extremely quiet. The thing is, it weighs like a freaking brick shit ton. Like, it's such a heavy gun. Now, where it shines is, it's the smallest AR type platform you can shoot, like, period, that I know of. Because you have the side folding stock and you have a five and a half inch barrel. And my plan for that is to keep, be able to run that suppressor quick detach. Uh, I don't see myself wanting to shoot it unsuppressed, but, uh, like, that just, that setup is so small. Where this, this is the smallest it gets. Like, it, I can't get it any smaller because the can fits under there. I could take this can off and I'll show you guys that real fast. It's a direct thread can. I've never had it back off ever and it's always super easy to take off with my hand. So direct thread can, but like even then you, you have the rail, you have the light. Like I'm never gonna run this unsuppressed. So can stays on. Uh, 
but that Rattler, I at least have the option to run it short if I want to, but nothing, nothing is kind of like replacing this. Like, I just want to have them both because I'm not, I'm not brand specific. I, I like a little bit of everything. Unfortunately, I have expensive taste. If you're watching this video, you probably do too. But yeah, no, I, I want to try the Rattler. Another one that I want to do is uh, a Noveski. So I'm currently paying off a Noveski 10 inch 300 blackout. That one I might run with supersonic ammo and that one I might try unsuppressed. Um, the thing with this gun is for the first couple years, I did shoot supers through it, like nothing lighter than 147 or 150 grain 300 blackout. My only complaint is with this stock and with how light it is, the supersonic ammo basically punches you in the face every time you pull the trigger. Um, that's, that, that, I guess a complaint, but it comes with owning the lightest standard blackout you can own. Supersonic ammo punches you in the face. If you watch some of my earlier videos on this, you'll kind of see it. And I talk about it in the very first video because I only had supers that day. But I solely feed this thing subsonic now, and that's all I plan on doing. I still have the option to run supers, but I'm gonna just baby it with subsonic ammo. It's so incredibly quiet. Um, and I wanna own other 300 blackouts to just try other things. But yeah, I think that's the main juice of this gun. I ha haven't changed anything other than this. And I plan on continuing it with just this. Like I don't see any other upgrades on it on the, in the future. It's perfect the way it is for me right now. And I do shoot it quite a bit. Um, I have, if I had to guess, I probably have 2,000 rounds through this, which for 300 blackout, that's a lot of ammo, and or a lot of money in ammo at least. Um, and like I said, I've owned it, physically owned it since 2019. So three years, about 2,000 rounds. And yeah, so far I love it. I've never had any problems with it so far. Um, no feeding issues, no, no ammo issues, but I've only ran 147 or 150 up to 220 grain ammo. I've never ran anything lighter than that because I was, I'm slightly worried that it'll like kick worse not that the recoil is bad, but like, I don't want to like abuse this gun too much because it's too sexy for it. But this gun was designed to be the quietest standard blackout there is. Like that, that's how I feel about it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm a little biased towards this gun, but I'm trying to like branch out into other higher end 300 blackouts too. So those will be coming in the future. But yeah, I think if you guys like something like this, just go for it. Like it's sick. Anytime I bring it out to the range, people love it. And yeah, it's just money, 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 money. And I, I've been building it since 2019. It's an expensive gun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment down below what your thoughts are on this. Or if you have like any other insanely quiet trainer blackout guns that you've built or bought, I'd love to hear it. Um, fair warning, next video, uh, I was testing a new mic that I bought on Amazon and it was dog shit. So I haven't posted that video yet, but I want to post it. It's on a VZ61, so that'll be next week's video. And yeah, I just, I'm going to tell you right now, the audio could not pick up a gunshot to save it, its life. I upgraded to the same mic that uh, Administrative Results uses. I was watching his videos. I'm like, yeah, I should buy that, but it's like 300 bucks. So I was trying not to buy a $300 mic, but yeah, I bought a cheap mic and it bit me in the butt. So next video, audio is not the best, but going forward, we now have the Rode mic. So I'm excited for that. And yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to build a better channel for you guys because I plan on doing this for a long time. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more.